Okay, drop create. This is going to be a pad tutorial. This will take some time because I want to make sure it's an in-depth tutorial. We're going to start with our pad template preset, which already makes it pretty easy to get nice pad sounds when you just drop simple melodic material onto either the sample layer or the grain layer. But we had a really good question um, on Facebook that was asking if we could drag content from, say, like the Kaleidoscope library that comes with Cubase. The only limitation that the drag and drop really has is that it has to be either like a wave or an AIF file, and it can't be uh, drag and dropped right from Steinberg's Media Bay if the sounds are encompassed in a VST sound file that is what Steinberg um, basically puts their content in a container. So it can't be in a container, but I'm going to show you how to quickly pull any of the content from the Media Bay out of that container so you can easily drag and drop it. So I have basically the pad template which has layer one and layer two. Layer one is a sample layer. That's why it's called drop S for sample. Layer two is drop G for grain. Now I've just um, dropped in two random samples just to make a nice little bellish pad. So it's very simple, but kind of beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you one layer at a time. So layer one, you have level for layer one and layer two. And also when you're on the main page, you can bypass a layer and it'll disappear. So let's bypass layer two for now. Go to layer one. So all we're hearing is layer one, which is just the sample layer. So we're gonna go to the media bay to the kaleidoscope content, which hopefully won't take forever. Okay, so let's listen to the chord. It says it's D. But we've already listened to chord one and chord fifty-seven. We'll grab. So, to if I try to drag and drop here, it looks like it's going to do it, but it does nothing. So what you have to do is just drag it on an audio track. Okay, now if you go to your pool window, it's in your pool, and you only need to do this once. Right click and show and explore. Okay, and so now I've got this explorer window, and I could see the audio file. It matches the name, pad am01, right here. It's highlighted. So now I'm going to grab that and drag and drop it. Okay, so now that I've done that, any other sounds that I pull out in here, this folder now knows where to look. So now we can just kind of look, and it takes us right there. We don't have to hunt for it anymore. So I'm going to close this, and let's just play it. All right, it's a chord, so I'm just going to play a single note. Okay, and real quickly, I'm going to loop it. So I'm just going to guess and say the loop start will say 50,000 samples. Let's go 100. And we'll loop it to 400,000 samples. Okay, and then the crossfade's already set with the patch, so you can pretty much just play it. Oh, and make sure loop's on over here. So now it'll just play forever. And we can go to the main page. We can mess with the filter, we can mess with the volume, or we can do the volume down here too. Okay, but that sounds kind of nice, but let's get interesting with this thing and put some motion. So we have a little bit of panning motion going. We'll make it a little more extreme. And now let's get the volume doing something interesting. So I have it on a ramp, a quarter note. So sounds pretty cool. So let's just leave that right there. I will turn the volume all the way down because we're going to go to the grain layer. 
which the grain layer is about the coolest thing you can use to make pads. It can make anything sound like a pad. So as I said before, we're going to go for chord 57 on this one. Chord one was in D, so we are going to end up tuning that down to C, but let's grab chord 57, which is in C. So all I need to do is now pull it out to this track and drop And Okay, I dropped it. And so now, okay, because this is its own layer, we have to do the same thing. But you only have to do it once for each layer. You have to go to the pool and then show and explore. And then drag, drag the chord. It automatically highlights it. Okay, so now if we did more samples, like here, I'll just show you. Do chord 59. If we wanted to go find that now, it's right here. It's you can it's off the screen, but here I'll close it so you can see this window actually opens by clicking this. And then now, if I wanted to, I could click chord. 59, but we'll go back to chord 57. Great, so let's hear it. Let's, what is going on here? Okay, let's, oh, I've got a bypass, sorry. So here we go. Okay, so that's granular. And by default, it's not moving direction. It's not moving speed. If I turn the direction or speed on, it would start to move from left to right. But sounds cool where it is. And because it's not moving, it'll sustain forever. You can move the position if you want, but we'll go close to the beginning. Sounds great. You can mess, mess with the filters if you want. And again, let's get some panning going. Let's get some motion going. I have a pulse. And now let's bring in the other layer. Okay, we got to tune that other layer. So we know the other layer is in D. So here's the root note. So you just pop it up to D. And now they're in tune, I believe. Now we've got a pretty pretty awesome two layer sound. Okay, and one of the greatest things about the Create interface, which is across all our libraries of PolyWave and the sample libraries that are coming, is you have this motion knob. And this is the most powerful knob you can have in terms of what it can do to a sound the complexity of the sound. So as I move this to the left, you're going to hear all the motion subside except for the panning. So any motion, if we were on the motion page, which we haven't talked about, because you can get another LFO, you can get a user envelope creating motion, you can get step filters kind of creating. But as I bring the motion, it all comes down to just a pad. So I'll get rid of this, and then I'll just bring it in. And if we stuck this back on, you'd hear that come in too. But right, we'll turn that off. So anyways, you got a pretty amazing pad. You can also control both filters. And what I'm doing is I'm turning up the mod wheel and here you you can control what the mod wheel controls for each layer and I'm controlling cutoff on both layers and this controls the amount of the throw of the mod wheel. 
and we can change it to a number of different things. But that's a quick tutorial. <laughs> of a pretty great sound that was all just grabbed from two sounds out of Steinberg's um, kaleidoscope library. So there you have it.